Hello! In this video, I'd like to talk about waxworms, those fat-filled delights that make a perfect treat for reptiles and mantis alike, and any other insectivores that you might have crawling around in your tanks at home. Just like mealworms, waxworms are not actually worms but insects. They're the larva of, guess what, the wax moth. Now, if you keep bees, then you already know about these little guys because they're a complete pest to you because they spend their life chewing through the framework and the inserts of your beehive and destroying the integrity, even to the point where the beehive can actually collapse to a reptile keeper. These are gold. I must stress that these guys should not be given to your reptiles or especially mantis as they're only food source. I mean, you like cheesecake, right? Everyone does. But if you lived on cheesecake, can you imagine the state of your body and what would happen? Same thing goes to these. These are full of fat and glucose and very little else and not very good as a staple diet. Make sure you give your insects and your reptiles a decent amount of variety in their diet and that will keep them going a lot longer and they'll be a lot happier and a lot healthier and probably a lot thinner. What I'm going to do today is show you how to make a small culture of waxworms so you never have to buy them again. You don't need many to start off with and the outlay really for this is not a lot and you don't need very much space either. I'm going to use something because I didn't have cheesecake. I had vanilla ice cream so I ate it all and this is what I'm going to use to make my culture. Now you can obviously go bigger than this Preferably not any smaller, but you can go bigger than this if you want more worms, bigger. It's a simple math problem. There are three other things we're going to need to get our culture going, and one of them is porridge oats, honey, and a toilet roll. They all sound like they'd match together anyway. Before we get on to the good bit, Let's make a lid. For this, for the lid, simple lid, we're going to take our vanilla ice cheapo lid here and I'm going to take a nice craft knife and give it a bit of a slit. Right, so get an adult to do this for you if you're under 25. And I'm going to cut a bit out. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, if you can get it square. Kudos to you, but if you can't, it doesn't really matter that much. And I'm going to cut this bit out here. We don't need that. Now, I'm left with this. For this next bit, I'm going to use organza, which is a really, really fine mesh. No doubt if you've bought books before, you've seen this mesh because this is the one that usually covers the tops of the cups and it's quite cheap. I get this from eBay for a couple of quid. Now what I'm going to do is just cut a bit out that's slightly bigger than our perfect square hole that I've cut and like so I think. And we don't need that anymore. Right. Now Waxworm babies are extremely tiny, so you have to make sure you don't use anything too large for this. I'm just going to stick some glue all the way around here, if it comes out like so. I'm just using a bit of Gorilla Glue here, I suppose super glue would do. And then I'm going to pop that on here, like this. Yep, I'm getting it on my fingers. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably lay eggs on this, to be honest with you. I just want to make sure I get a seal. Because the tiny, tiny little worms that appear are very good at climbing everywhere. So. Make sure that glues all the way around there. And as this is water-based, 
give it a quick spring with the spray. And there we have a nice mesh covered hole that they can breathe with. And now we have our precision cut lid, as you can see. Let's get on to the good stuff. Camera two. And here we have it. Our dish and our porridge. So the first thing I'll do is put about probably 25 mil, one inch, 2.5 centimeters in there, like so. I don't know why I flattened it down. And then I'm simply gonna pour some honey on here. Now let's not go too much with the honey. Yep. Oh, I'm going to have to eat that now. Mm. Oh, honey's so good. I want to be a waxworm. Of course, you didn't notice the brief intermission there because I forgot my glove. And I ain't going to stick my hands in there without one because I have to touch camera equipment and other things. So I'm just going to squish this together. As you see, now oh, this feels really disgusting. And you want it clumpy, but not soaking wet. So let's have a bit more of this. Yeah, a bit more honey in there. A bit wetter. And the beauty of that honey is that's going to go on my shelf. And that's also another treat for a mantis because they love honey. I don't know if anything else does. This is so whatever. Please let me know in the comments below. Right, that's pretty sticky quite firm as you see it it will ball up but not too bad it's probably enough for them they'll eat anything to be honest with you so you have to be careful look at that glove and that's why i didn't put my hands in there so let's try and get that off there no that's not happening we just have to bin that okay there we go and that's for the bin now take your toilet roll and unpeel it and this is simply because we want some surface area. You can use egg boxes and other such things. And I am going to give this like a little crunch up so it fits in here like that. You can put a few of these in. Now the reason for this is because when they hatch, the moths will can lay up to two to three, right up to 600 eggs, depending on the temperature, to be honest. And but we'll get to that in a minute. And that is about it. That's all you need for a waxworm culture, apart from one other thing, the waxworms. Now, depending on how many you want to grow, obviously it depends how many you're going to add. So I'm going to shove some in here. There's quite a few in here, actually. Little evil grubs of doom. They're evidently tasty. You have to be careful with these because these legs all have little suckers on them and they can climb up anything and so does the tail. The tail has a sucker on it as well. So yeah, they can climb up anything. And this is now our culture. Let's pop the lid on. I promise I'm not advertising for mm, Morrison's. Yeah, we'll pop the lid on there and they will pupate, turn into moths, and we'll eventually have lots and lots of eggs laid on that toilet roll as time progresses. Waxworms like quite a specific temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees centigrade. It doesn't really matter, you won't kill them if it's higher or lower than that, but if it's lower, they'll just take longer for their life cycle to complete, and if it's higher, they'll be a bit quicker. After pupation, it takes about three to five days, maybe a week, depending on the temperature, for them to actually hatch out into moths. Now this is where nature has it right, because the males live longer than the females, which generally only live for 10 to 12 days. They basically come out, get fertilized, lay their eggs, and die. Now, once these guys have died, you want to take them out because you don't want them in there at all. I feed mine to my pond fish, but I suppose you could feed them to isopods or anything else that doesn't mind dead insects. And that's about it for this video. There's not much else you need to know about breeding waxworms. They're really, really simple creatures to breed and they are a tasty snack for your mantis and your reptiles. 
If you like this video, show it. Give us a like, subscribe, and don't forget to tickle me bell so you don't miss anything because I do upload quite regular and it's usually videos like this of terrarium builds. Check out the terrarium builds, they're pretty funky actually. I'm going to add some more to them this week. This is The Bug Room, signing off. Bye.